Iran's nuclear program has two faces. One is the peaceful pursuit of electric power generation, while the other raises strong international suspicions that Tehran may be seeking nuclear weapons. Iran signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty about 40 years ago, entitling it to build its new nuclear power plant at Boucher. But the treaty also requires Iran to abide by strict rules outlined by Institute for Science and International Security founder David Albright. And they agreed to not only not seek nuclear weapons, but they also agreed to inspections by the International Atomic Energy Agency. And they were, and, and more importantly in this case, they were caught cheating. They were hiding, they weren't fulfilling their obligations to the IA. And then, and then when the, in a sense they were caught, they then tried to cover up. Much of Iran's reluctance about IAEA inspections has centered around a facility near the city of Natanz that was revealed in 2002 by an Iranian dissident group. The activities there are described by nuclear threat initiative analyst Corey Hinderstein. Natanz is a uranium enrichment facility based on the technology of uranium enrichment centrifuges. And what this means is that there will be installed thousands of machines that spin at very high speeds that allow Iran to get the uranium atoms that are good for nuclear weapons or good for nuclear fuel for a power plant. Hinderstein says Iran cannot justify its uranium enrichment program by claiming it is needed for the Boucher nuclear power plant. Russia provides and controls Boucher's fuel. At the time that they started working on their, uh, their centrifuge program or their enrichment capability, they didn't have a Bushir reactor, and they had no contract to build a Bushir reactor. And so why they were working on enrichment before they had a reactor to match it is a question. Hinderstein and other analysts say much of Natanz is buried under layers of earth and concrete to protect it from attack. Additionally, Natanz has strong air defenses. In this satellite photo, you can see what analysts describe as one of the surface-to-air missile batteries that encircle the facility. But attacking the Tons or any other uranium enrichment facility does not stop that work from proceeding. The former nuclear program inspector in Iraq, David Albright. You hit a centrifuge plant, they still have their capability to make centrifuges, and they just make three to 6,000 more, put them someplace else. And so it's really hard to, to bomb away a centrifuge program. Many nations have strongly criticized Iran's uranium enrichment program. This opposition has been exploited by Iran's leaders for domestic politics, according to another nuclear proliferation analyst, Joseph Serencioni, at the Plowshares Fund. President Ahmadinejad has done a very good job of plucking this nationalist string here, of using this issue to prop up his otherwise very unpopular regime. As long as this re remains an issue of appeal to the Iranian people, you can expect government officials to keep using it. Natanz is not the only Iranian nuclear facility getting strong international notice and concern. Near the city of Iraq, another nuclear reactor is under construction. This reactor uses so-called heavy water, also called deuterium, which has a neutron in each hydrogen atom. Corey Hinderstein explains the significance of the Iraq facility. The result of this technology, this sort of setup, is that it produces really, really good plutonium for nuclear weapons. And in fact, um, facilities almost identical to the Iraq facility um, are in existence in Pakistan. Hinderstein adds that like Natanz, Iraq has not been fully open to IAEA inspections. Many world leaders have called on Iran to fully acknowledge its nuclear activities. Some have stated Iran will not be allowed to acquire nuclear weapons. Jeffrey Young, VOA News.